Hi, in this video we're going to go over some frequently asked questions that we get regarding the studio. These would be, how come I don't see data for devices I've added? How come I'm not receiving flows from my device? How come I'm not receiving configuration backups? How come I'm not receiving alerts that I've set up? And how to get in touch with support. So from this point, we're going to go over the first item, which is why am I not seeing data for a specific device? I've just added this device into the studio and as we can see, we're not getting any data for it. So the first things we need to do are verify that credentials are set for the device. We can do this by going to the set credentials window and assigning it credentials here. I'm going to assign it public credentials and also WMI credentials to make sure that we get Windows based services for the device. Once finished, I'm going to click on apply and click on OK. Once this is done, I'm going to run a go live on the device for about a minute and make sure that it's going to pull data for real time and I should see data appearing for the device provided that the SNMP community string is set the same on the device itself which we'll do in one moment. And as you can see here now, the device is updated with usage information, memory, processor, DNS and whatnot. So I know that this device is now submitting data back to the studio. The other way to verify this is on the device itself, which we can see here that we've gone under services and we can see the SNMP service running and it has started. And if we right click and we go to properties, we want to check the security tab to make sure the community string is set the same and also that we have accept SNMP packets from any host selected. Once we do those two, to, two things, we should see data start appearing for the device. The other option is that you want to make sure that it's in a policy that is monitoring data. If I click on the reassign policy, I can see here that currently it's in the default policy, but it's a desktop machine, so I'm going to want to reassign it to the desktop policy. I'm going to click on OK, and I should see this device now appear in the desktop policy. From this point on, I'd want to go to Edit and look at the monitors tab and see how frequently these data types are coming in. And we can see here CPU and memory are set to daily, so if I want this to be more frequent, I'm definitely going to want to kick these off to look for data at five minute intervals as opposed to daily. So we should now know how to get data from a device by enabling SNMP and also making sure that the community string is set the same in the studio. If we go back to the devices view, we can now go over network traffic flow. As we can see here, the first thing you want to do is verify that the device you're trying to enable flows on is a flow capable device. That is very important. Once you verify that it will support some type of flow technology, we want to go to wizards enable traffic analysis and this brings up the traffic analysis enablement. You can see here that this device is a Cisco 2800 so it does support NetFlow and we're going to go ahead and click on next. You want to make sure that this device has read write access or credentials with the SNMP community screen that you assign it or else this get settings wizard will not work. Once I click on get settings I should get an interface list and I can see here that I'm exporting flows to the agent device that is monitoring this 2800 Cisco router which is my main collector agent right here we can see that so this is correct and it's sending over port 2055 I'm going to click on save settings and then click next and finish typically this can take 30 seconds or about a minute for, for flows to show up provided that flows are being generated on the device itself if I double click now, I can see network traffic flow appear in device details. Now by chance, if I did want to verify on the device itself, or on the agent that is listening, we can run a command prompt and run a netstat hyphen anop udp to verify what ports this device is listening on. And as we can see here, it is listening on port 2055 for NetFlow, as well as the other ports that we have listed, 69, 514, 6343, 9555, 
and 9995. So that's pretty much flows and the only other thing that I'd like to touch upon is that make sure that this device is again in a policy that is monitoring NetFlow. We can see it's in the networking policy here. So if I go to the networking policy and I go to edit and I go to the monitors tab, I can see that NetFlow is being listened basically for this device. So we should receive flows without any issue. Now if I go back to the devices view. we want to go over why am I not seeing configuration backups for, for my device. Again, you want to make sure that the device is sitting in a policy that is monitoring configuration backup. So that's the first thing I'm going to check. Again, we go to edit, monitors, and see that configuration backup is selected. And it's set to 12 hour intervals. If I don't need it that often, I can switch this to whatever interval that I'd like. You can then Double click on the device and provided that we have correct credentials for the device we should see configuration backup appear in device details. Now another way to verify this is if I go to a command prompt or we actually run a telnet into a device and verify that we can actually run a command that will copy the running configuration to the t via TFTP to the agent that is monitoring this device. As you can see here, I'm trying to copy the running configuration to the IP address of the main listening agent for this device. It's going to ask me, is this the name of the remote host? It is. I'm going to click enter and the destination file name you can change if you want. For troubleshooting purposes, I'm just going to click enter. And if this succeeds, then we should receive configuration backups in device details. If this fails, then something else is blocking this from happening. The last thing I do want to go over is alerting. So why would you not be receiving specific alerts via email or being generated? So for instance, if I want to be alerted via the server policy on a memory alert. So if I go to new, new condition, and I want to be notified if memory is going to be over a fixed value of 90%. I also have a reset condition that says I want to know also or I want the alert to reset itself when it is back under 50 percent. Now this is a very proactive model but just to keep in mind that this alert will not trigger until this condition is set to any. Right now it is set to all so until both of these conditions are met the alert will not trigger. So if you do want to receive it say for instance if just the memory is over 90 percent I want this to be set to any. For the alerting aspect of it, we definitely want to make sure that the admin email address that is configured in the system is something that you have set up on your own and that's a valid email address for alerts to be sent out on. And also that you have notifying conditions met if you want to be receiving emails regarding this alert. And the last place that you want to check for this is under the SNMP settings in the administration section where you can enter in a from email address, your SMTP server, authentication if needed, and you can also send out a test email message to make sure and verify that your SMTP server is currently functioning. We also have a failover to monitoring SMTP server option selected here by default, which means that if your SMTP server does go down, we will route the alerts via our SMTP server to get you those alerts. That's pretty much it for this Frequently Asked Questions session. I just wanted to go over the Give Feedback option, which is the best way to get a hold of support.
please uh, utilize this tool as much as possible. It will automatically open a ticket with us and we will get back to you as soon as possible if you run into any issues along the way. Thank you very much.